Hey guys, welcome to Connecting the Dots, the channel where we follow the breadcrumbs and try to predict where disruptions will take us. My friends, we are navigating through some of the most fascinating times in history. In recent months, the convergence of cutting edge technologies has propelled humanoid robots past an inflection point in their development. Two years ago, when Tesla only showed a person in a robot costume, my prediction that by 2024, Optimus would be working in factories might have seemed far-fetched. Yet in a blink, theory transformed into reality. Humanoid robots from various companies are making bold strides. Specialized suppliers are emerging, and a complete infrastructure, or rather an ecosystem, is being developed for them, with training becoming as straightforward as imaginable. Every week there's a new demonstration, and every day highly intelligent people dive deep into the demos, skillfully unpacking and dissecting the latest breakthroughs. Although we have yet to see factories operated by humanoid robots, this vision has shifted from a distant dream to an imminent reality. Such factories are clearly visible on the horizon, and they are approaching fast. The thing is, here at Connecting the Dots, I aim to look not just at the immediate horizon, but also far beyond. So let us fast forward into the future. In today's exploration, we'll journey to the factory of a distant future, a future where humanoid robots are the norm and human labor has become a relic of the past, regarded as we now regard the era of horse-drawn carriages. Patrons make this channel possible, so a quick shout out to my latest patrons, Patrick M, Ronnie E, Roger B, and, sorry if I mispronounce your name, Pile B. Your support enables me to do these videos without chasing the YouTube algorithm, so to all my patrons, you guys rock. And now buckle up and get ready, because we are about to dive into huge disruptions, and disruptions are never boring. Chapter 1. The Starting Line It's all too easy to throw baseless ideas into the air. So to make everything plausible, the video contains several chapters, each layering on its predecessor to build a comprehensive vision of the future. As a baseline on which to show all changes, let's imagine a factory which is fully operated by humanoid robots, but everything else remains the same. The same factory as we have today and the same production methods. It is only the workforce that changed. But this change in workforce is far from trivial because humanoids are different than humans. This unlocks amazing possibilities. Let's see what they are. Chapter 2, Superhuman 1.0 In my earlier discussions on the factory of the future that Tesla is constructing, I speculated that robots will be equipped with large language models, enabling speech-based interaction. Recent demos showed just that, with humans telling robots what to do and robots replying back. This simplifies interactions and is as intuitive as interacting with a colleague is. But while talking is cheap, it is also very slow. Should we really expect two robots to use speech for interaction, clumsily snailing at 150 to 200 words per minute like modern day R2D2 and C3POs, when they could use wireless and start cracking jokes at gigahertz speeds instead? Consider an analogy. If modern computers retained serial ports from the 1980s, nobody in their right minds would expect computers to use these for communications when USB-C, Ethernet, and wireless connections are also available. Yet even these prehistoric ports are 3,000 times faster than verbal communication. So robots will communicate verbally with us, but digitally between them. This sounds very efficient and logical, but I think it should have us at the edge of our seats. It's not robots scheming a Skynet uprising without us hearing that I'm referring to, yet it's still deep and profound. The rationale for humanoid robots is their versatility in a human-centric world. For example, a robot that is almost fully humanoid yet has grippers as hands can stack crates all day long but wouldn't know its right from its left if it has to use power tools or to do delicate work. Similarly, a wheeled robot can move faster than humans around the factory floor but is challenged if it has to climb stairs. Fully humanoid robots, however, can stack crates and can use power tools can walk around the floor and can climb stairs. They have vision to let them see their surroundings, they understand language, and can read signs and instructions. And sure, they can work three shifts without tiring, but otherwise, they are not very different from humans. They are not superhuman. But wireless communications at gigabit speeds is something that humans don't have. Our interfaces are extremely slow, and if robots can interface much faster, this marks the first clear superiority of humanoid robots over their human counterparts. A quote misattributed to Yogi Berra says that, in theory, there's no difference between theory and practice. In practice, there is. Paraphrasing on that, and in theory, there is no difference between humanoid workers and human workers, but in practice, 
There is. The divergence from human capabilities begins with wireless communications. Let's see which possibilities this brings. Chapter 3. The Living Organism Moving deeper into the future of automobile manufacturing with humanoid robots, we arrive at a concept where the entire factory operates like a single intelligent entity. This chapter, The Living Organism, explores how the advanced communication capabilities of robots will revolutionize the manufacturing process, continuing the previous theme of not forcing robots to use obsolete interfaces wherever faster ones are possible, opens a world of opportunities. Tesla's factories contain numerous screens with which the factory's Digital Self-Management AI, or DSM, provides workers with loads of information. Information includes details about the car being built, such as the parts it contains and how well it passed previous tests, feedback for the workers regarding how well they perform their job, and unrelated information which enables employees to pursue other tasks, such as which problems need to be tackled and what's done about them, potential pathways for improvement, financial metrics, and more. And as Tesla's vehicles progress through assembly, their computers operate in factory mode, passing info to the central AI and possibly also displaying it on the car's center monitor. But just like with talking, why make the robots go and read factory monitors designed for humans when they can directly connect to the factory's AI and to the vehicles themselves? Using wireless communications will enable a level of interaction much richer and far more efficient than any human capability with better monitoring of the production process and enabling the humanoids to adjust their operations in real time as the cars are being built. But the shift to wireless communications isn't just about efficiency. It signifies the evolution of the factory into a networked organism. Robots, production systems, and vehicles share data continuously, functioning like cells within a larger body. This interconnectedness allows for an intelligent, adaptive manufacturing process akin to a hive mind, where decisions are made based on a wealth of shared information. Every component within this ecosystem, from tools to machines, communicates and shares data, which enables optimizing the production process, reducing downtime, and proactively predicting required maintenance. The outcome is a self-optimizing manufacturing system that not only reduces costs and enhances efficiency, but also produces higher quality vehicles. This represents a significant leap forward in automotive manufacturing, marking a transition to an era where factories are not just places of production, but intelligent entities capable of constant learning and adaptation. Chapter four, unionizing. With intelligent robots working three shifts a day, seven days a week, the robots will join the UAW. Okay, I'm just kidding. Sorry to spoil your daydream, Sean Fain, but this won't happen, so let's move on. Chapter five, supply chain and preventive maintenance. As factories become more integrated, with every component from production lines to finished vehicles communicating in real time, the potential for a more streamlined, efficient, and environmentally friendly supply chains becomes apparent. Autonomous systems could take over the entire logistics process, from ordering raw materials to delivering finished cars, possibly even to customers' doorsteps. This automation aims to optimize speed, reduce costs, and minimize the environmental footprint of manufacturing and distribution. That being said, how much of a change is this for Tesla? Tesla's factory AI already integrates production with supplies setting an extremely high bar compared to where other companies are at. So the question arises, will integrating humanoids into the hive mind improve this even further? I think it will. Robots should be able to share with other robots, as well as the factory AI, the view through their eyes, obtaining a combined picture and faster handling of situations. These additional feeds from different angles and distances should enable better visual inspection of the cars. But there's more. Robots can perform consistently, time after time, and they can provide tactile and audible streams, which makes it a whole new ball game. Tesla is data obsessed. So logging the exact resistance that the robot encounters when inserting a plug or tightening a fastener, as well as sampling the sounds the parts emit when this is done, will provide much better understanding of variations between cars. This should enable earlier pinpointing of faulty parts and materials, as well as impending maintenance required for factory machinery. So yes, even for Tesla, adding humanoid robots can significantly improve supply management and preventive maintenance. In the utopian future of abundance that robots could bring, we will have more time on our hands for both leisure and self-development. Until then, however, 
Time is my most precious resource, so I'd like to introduce to you my latest time saver. Shortform, the sponsor of this video, is a game changer for anyone who loves learning and reading, but struggles to find the time. Shortform distills the world's best nonfiction books into comprehensive, yet concise, guides. I said guides because these are much more than book summaries. It's like having a smart friend who's read everything and can clearly explain the most complex ideas to you. Sometimes even excellent books can be useless if they don't cover a specific topic I need, and short form slashes the time wasted on those and lets me focus on those that can serve me the most. Each book has a one-page summary, which helps me quickly grasp the main points and see whether to go deeper or move on. The guides also provide deeper analyses, interactive exercises, and even comparisons with ideas from other books. The subscription also includes Shortform AI, a browser extension that instantly generates high-quality summaries for blogs, articles, emails, and YouTube videos at the click of a button. I use it extensively to shorten my research and quickly see what web pages have in store. For example, opening this New York Times article about Tesla we get a concise summary of the article's main points, along with additional context and even counter-arguments against the article's FUD. Use my link shortform.com connecting and get a free trial and 20% off your annual subscription. Visit shortform.com connecting and experience this time saver yourself. Chapter 6, Superhuman 2.0, Rethinking Assembly. With humanoid robots taking over factories, car production and assembly are poised for a revolutionary transformation. Freed from human limitations, these robots bring unprecedented flexibility and efficiency to manufacturing processes. In this new era, the concept of the assembly line will evolve, since robots will be capable of performing multiple tasks with expert precision. This will enable having some of the stations, well, stationary. Wherever this makes sense, Instead of moving the vehicle or module from station to station for each single task as currently done, the vehicle or module will remain in place, and the station's robots will complete a sequence of several tasks before the car moves on. With several parts arriving to the station via an overhead conveyor, this could increase the factory's volumetric efficiency. This approach harkens back to the pre-production line era, when cars were crafted by a single team in one place, and combining stationary islands in the production stream provides a modern twist on traditional manufacturing methods. Moreover, the physical capabilities of humanoid robots, working tirelessly, performing tasks upside down, and even operating from above, mean that the entire layout of production lines can be reimagined. My paternal grandfather, an engineer, was ambidextrous. Whenever his arm got tired hammering something, he would just switch hands and continue hammering. Robots should one-up that, as they will be able to concurrently perform completely different tasks with each hand. To me, a single task at a time male, nothing spells superhuman better than that. Robots equipped with advanced sensors and AI can execute complex assembly processes that would be impractical or impossible for human workers. This includes tasks requiring precision in awkward positions or locations within the vehicle that are hard to reach for humans but trivial for robots. To give an example, let's ignore the unboxed process for a moment. Imagine the car's body progressing from station to station with a robot or two crouched inside, ready to accept parts through the doors and install them from inside. Although this should increase efficiency, it cannot be performed by humans. The agility of humanoid robots extends to their ability to communicate rapidly with each other, with factory systems, and with the cars they build. This interconnectedness facilitates a highly adaptive and responsive manufacturing environment. You know how when two workers install something together, they exchange instructions such as, move two inches to the right, you overdid it, move half an inch back, with fast communications and the ability to view things from each other's eyes. Even large groups of robots will be able to work in unison. And by running millions of simulations, AI could discover new, more efficient production methods vastly different from what we do now, which utilize the robot's unique abilities to work as singles and cooperatively. I could go on and on with this section, but you get the idea. By embracing the unique capabilities of humanoid robots, car manufacturing can leap forward. This not only involves redefining how tasks are performed, but also rethinking the principles of vehicle design and factory layout. The result is a production process that's not just faster and more efficient, but also capable of crafting vehicles in ways we're only beginning to imagine. Chapter 7, Made on Earth by Humanoids. As we shift towards factories operated exclusively by humanoid and industrial robots, 
the design of vehicles for manufacturing will undoubtedly evolve. With the elimination of the need to accommodate human workers in the manufacturing process, vehicle design can now be optimized to leverage the unique capabilities of robots. This new paradigm in manufacturing enables designers to reconsider aspects of vehicle construction that were previously dictated by the limitations and requirements of human ergonomics and safety. For instance, since robots can manipulate objects with precision in confined spaces or at unusual angles, the complexity and accessibility of certain components can be reimagined. Imagine working with your hands obstructed from view by the module you are working on, but obtaining a video feed from a factory camera or another robot you are working with. Humans cannot do this easily, so parts design is limited by the requirement of providing workers with an unobstructed view of whatever they are doing. Since robots do not share this limitation, this enables previously impossible designs. The use of advanced materials could also be expanded. Robots, with their precise and consistent application, can work with materials that are challenging for humans to handle, such as advanced composites or alloys that require precise manipulation during assembly. This could lead to vehicles that are safer, more durable, and more efficient. In addition, the shift to robotic manufacturing could influence the overall aesthetic and functionality of vehicles. Without the constraints of human-centered assembly processes, the design can prioritize aerodynamics, structural integrity, and other performance factors more freely, potentially leading to radical changes in vehicle shapes and configurations. Note that regardless of humanoid robots, automotive design is at the brink of immense changes which were unimaginable until now. Let me know in the comments below whether you'd like me to do a video on the upcoming revolution in the way cars are designed. Chapter 8. The Alien Territory of Robofactories The idea behind giving robots a humanoid shape is to enable their seamless operation in environments designed for humans. Introducing humanoids into a car factory, for instance, doesn't necessitate altering the factory's layout or operations, as robots would be able to work within human-designed constraints. However, this raises the question, what happens once humans are no longer involved in production and factories are no longer expected to ever accommodate human workers? At this point, there is no rationale for constructing factories for human operation. Instead, the design and operational philosophy of factories will pivot entirely towards accommodating humanoid robots. This shift signifies a profound transformation in the industrial landscape from environments crafted for human hands bodies, and minds to those optimized for the capabilities of robots. New factories will emerge as spaces where traditional human requirements, such as environmental controls for comfort, safety measures tailored to human vulnerabilities, and amenities like restrooms and cafeterias are drastically minimized or eliminated. The architectural and operational shifts are profound. Without the need for human access, Factory layouts can be optimized for the movement and efficiency of robots, employing vertical spaces and access methods beyond conventional human use. For example, getting to the other side of the Gigafactory takes time, but can be much faster if hanging from a high-speed overhead conveyor or even teleported via a mini hyperloop tube. Not saying they will do this, but it just shows how possibilities become endless. And while we're at it, unless additional robots are needed there, why should a robot even get to the other side of the factory when a local robot can do everything instead? The transition extends to machinery and equipment. Gigapresses and other production tools have buttons, levers, and graphic user interfaces designed for humans. As humanoids replace humans, wireless control will arrive and existing interfaces will disappear. Wireless control will be easier, faster, and more direct and will facilitate working at much higher speeds. As factories evolve to cater exclusively for humanoid robots, they transform into spaces that might seem alien and inaccessible to human visitors. This transformation underscores a broader trend. Rather than robots adapting to a world built for humans as we aim for now, we are witnessing the inception of specialized environments that, while alien to us, are perfectly suited to the next generation of industrial workers. Chapter 9. Tools Evolved you know the story of how the width of the space shuttle's solid rocket booster was determined by the width of Roman Empire war chariots? While only a myth, it is true that today's road system as well as many other aspects of human life contains obsolete remnants and requirements from days gone by. For example, many roads pass through circuitous and indirect ways 
determined by old zoning and property rights, which are not existent today, and replacing them with direct roads could greatly increase efficiency. One of the main driving forces behind making robots humanoid, including hands with human-like dexterity, is to enable them to use tools designed for humans. Such tools are plentiful and much less expensive than specially made tools fitted to industrial robots. However, once humanoid robots remain the only ones using these tools, why keep them constrained by human limitations? The possibilities for change in this field are enormous, but to give an idea, consider the following possibilities. Leveraging the robot's superior precision and ability to operate at both micro and macro scales, tools can be designed for tasks beyond the current limits of human capability. This opens new possibilities in manufacturing, from intricate electronic components to large-scale structural elements, all with a degree of accuracy previously unattainable. Just like with factory machinery, wireless control and feedback will replace the current buttons. This will spur a new breed of power tools, which will enable the robot to precisely determine metrics such as rotation speed, torque, and drill bit temperature. Imagine being able to stop a drill after an exact number of turns or just before it pierces the material and gets to the other side. You know how, when trying to release a stubborn screw, sometimes the screw's grooves get destroyed, which makes releasing it a bigger problem? Say goodbye to that because future tools will incorporate advanced sensors that provide feedback directly to the robot's central processing unit, along with wireless control and added precision. This integration enables rapid, real-time adjustments during tasks, ensuring unparalleled precision and adaptability. Such tools become an extension of the robots themselves with the ability to detect and respond to material properties or the nuances of assembly tasks. Additionally, a paradigm shift in how tools are powered could arrive. Envision drills or screwdrivers without any batteries, instead featuring a small plug in the backside of their grip. This plug could connect directly to a socket in the robot's palm, drawing power from the robot's internal battery, which could be constantly wirelessly charged. This system not only streamlines the workspace by eliminating the need for separate charging stations for tools, but also enhances operational efficiency as tools can be lighter, smaller, and more versatile. Robots will employ intelligent power management strategies to balance tool usage with their charging cycles, ensuring continuous operation without compromising performance. In this new age of manufacturing, tools made for humanoid robots will evolve in tandem with their humanoid operators, leading to a symbiotic relationship where each is optimized for the other. Gradually, both robots and tools will evolve farther away from their human-defined origins, enabling lower costs, increased efficiency, and enhanced capabilities, which redefine the boundaries of what is manufacturable. Chapter 10, Agility. Humanoid-operated factories will be extremely agile and quick to introduce changes in production. Breaking free from the requirement to maintain safe working conditions within factories dramatically accelerates the capacity for change. The principle of fail fast and iterate, which all of Elon Musk's companies embrace so well, will achieve new heights. Factories can undergo rapid modifications and reconfigurations to adapt to new production demands or technological advancements without the extensive safety considerations required for human workers. Trying out new ideas will be easier than ever. If they work, great, but if they do not, just iterate and try another setup until progress is made. Furthermore, running millions of simulations before changes are made will allow for exhaustive testing of potential changes in a virtual environment before implementing them in the real world, significantly reducing the risk and time associated with physical trials. Since robots are better modeled than humans, the move from simulation to actual production will be swift. Chapter 11, Warp Speed. In addition, the factories will be able to crank up production speed and, acting like an alien dreadnought from science fiction movies, start spitting out cars faster than any factory in human history. The pace at which cars are produced today is limited by human capabilities and the need to prevent worker fatigue, errors, and injuries. This has kept cycle times of car factories relatively unchanged since the time of Henry Ford, with around 60 seconds between cars. Obsessed with production speed and efficiency, Tesla managed to drop cycle time to a world beating 35 seconds between cars. But even at this level, substantial room remains for improvement. Why not make it 10 seconds or five? Why not a second, really? The introduction of humanoid robots into the production process opens the door to drastically accelerating these speeds as robots can operate continuously 
without the limitations faced by human workers. This capability to work tirelessly, coupled with the robot's consistent precision, allows for a significant increase in production rates, moving us closer to warp speed in manufacturing. Moreover, being able to directly control machines and tools and get instant feedback from them via wireless connection will significantly improve production speed. Of course, ramping up the pace will require significant changes in the way vehicles are built. For a deeper dive into these changes, I suggest watching my Alien Dreadnought 3.0 video, where I outline the necessary adjustments and innovations. There's a link in the description. Chapter 12, The Fifth Revolution. In the Alien Dreadnought 3.0 video, I listed what I called Tesla's four manufacturing revolutions and teased that there will also be a fifth. The first revolution, humans are expensive, let's use robots, emerged with Model 3. In this context, expensive wasn't just about cost, but also about efficiency and speed. Despite production hell setbacks, Tesla reached levels of automation far higher than other car makers and slashed the number of workers required for production. The second revolution, robots are expensive, let's use castings, introduced two giant castings into Model Y production. These castings replaced 171 parts, 1,600 welds, and 300 industrial robots while improving build quality. Starting this year, the third revolution will arrive. Like the first, this too can be summed as humans are expensive, let's use robots, as it starts using Tesla's Optimus humanoid robot for tasks currently performed by human workers. In the fourth revolution, the unboxed production method will build cars in modules and significantly accelerate production. And the fifth revolution, you guessed it, is what this video is all about. It will also involve immense changes outside the scope of this video in the way cars are designed. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a video about the imminent revolution, which I expect to soon see in car design. The fifth revolution of unlatching the shackles imposed by limitations of human workers and embracing the superhuman capabilities of humanoid robots is the final ingredient required to achieve a true alien dreadnought. An alien it is. Factories will become terra aliena, inhospitable for humans and unlike anything we have known before. The factory's neural network will interact with those of the robots to create a giant hive mind controlling all factory operations. The hive mind will interact with cars, factory machinery, and even hand tools via wireless interfaces. It will control production and obtain feedback at the speed of thought, and it will produce huge data feeds with which to improve the cars and better predict shortages and malfunctions. This busy hive will produce electric vehicles faster, cheaper, more efficiently and with higher quality than ever before. It will be scary and it will be exciting and it will give customers much better cars at a much lower price. It seems like science fiction, but you know as well as I do that it will arrive. And I don't know about you, but I can hardly wait. Peeping into the future is a game of hit or miss, which is better played in larger groups. So let me know below what made sense to you and what you think I got wrong. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting me on patreon.com slash connecting odots for as little as one buck a month. Besides helping me make more content, you will get early ad-free access to all my videos as well as monthly patron-exclusive content. Don't forget to visit shortform.com slash connecting to start your free trial and get 20% off the annual subscription. Come follow me on X where I am connecting odots. Until next time, I am connecting the dots and you are amazing. When you rub against the wall and you cannot fall, so come on, go on.